Hey guys, watch my process for this mixed media piece. It is on a slick surface, so the first thing I did was do a layer of polycrylic on it, which is water-based, clear coat that does not yellow. And I drew my fox based on a photo. You can see the photo up above it where I exaggerated his eye and I exaggerated his emotions. And now I am using clear Gorilla Glue to, um, to glue down the big objects. There I just turned the hands to where it would work with my painting better. And continue gluing the objects down. I like to glue the big objects down before I paint and let them dry so I get a better stick than if I put the objects into the paint, uh, especially that hat wasn't even going to be in paint at all. So I'm getting as many of the big things glued ahead of time. I should not have glued that monocle down. That becomes annoying and makes more work for me later. I could have easily stuck it into the paint. I think um, I think that might be an old dog collar of some sort or dog harness that I'm using for the steampunk flare. I just save interesting things instead of throwing them away. I like the pool tabs there, the on any cat food tins, I think is where those came from. I like to use um, clear gorilla glue as my glue the viscosity to me is just right super glue is super runny and unpleasant to work with those tiny little metallic tubes and i used to use e6000 which a lot of mixed media artists like and i will use in a pinch but i don't like again having to squeeze that metallic tube as it's getting empty it becomes more and more difficult to get the the glue out and it hurts my hands I like the nozzle of the clear Gorilla Glue and I like the feel of it in my hands. It's much easier to use. So that is my favorite of the glues. Here I let that glue dry and now I'm doing a layer of polycrylic, another layer of polycrylic to help glue it down even more. I am very rough on my art so I like to get a good glue down. So that as it's being transported, that stuff doesn't get knocked off as easily. Here I'm applying white, thick acrylic paint. And you'll see what I'm using is not your typical container of paint. That's what Gaffrey Art Material comes in, is these thick plastic um, tubes like that, much like piping bags, so you can cut the end of the tube and sometimes apply it directly onto your painting where you need it to be. And there I used palette knives to get the paint where I wanted it more than just the initial application. And again, I'm piping directly onto my painting. Super convenient, less paint waste. And I'm making sure to build out right there where I needed more texture along the jaw of the fox. You can use um, the depth of your paint to add to your painting. And once I got that on there, I got my palette. I need to, oh, showing I just got red all over my sweater. So that has become a house sweater now. I could have stopped to clean it, but I didn't feel like it already had a hole in it anyhow. And now I am, um, spreading the paint into the corners with the palette knife. And then I'm using a long skinny palette knife, a long pointy one to do the fur texture. Thinking of the direction of the fur, uh, starting so that all the fur goes the right way and starting with the bottom layers where there's gonna be other layers that will stick out on top of those. Uh, you do want to get to the texturing quickly if it doesn't come with your initial um, application. With Gaffrey paints, they're going to start getting a skin on them within 30 minutes. You won't be able to rework them as neatly. And I'm getting the layers between the white and the red right there so that it is a little more blendy than just, I don't go for a very graphic look. I want it a little blendy. 
and now I'm texturing the rest of the white. I use um, scrap paper instead of paper towels to wipe my palette knives onto. Just a way to try to be a little more careful with the Earth's resources. So any papers that I run off, after I'm done with them, I just put them in a pile on my desk, a little stack that I use instead of paper towels. And now I'm having to do inside that monocle with a paintbrush and I'm grouching at myself for making it harder than it needed to be. I could have easily stuck the monocle into the paint as I'm gonna start sticking other objects into the wet paint. Rest of the bow tie with the pull tabs and then a chain. And so what I like to do um, is after the paint thoroughly dries, I will go through with my clear acrylic glue, and not acrylic, just my clear Gorilla Glue, and I will dribble it on top of any objects that I've stuck into the paint because we're still dealing with the whole slick surface thing. So they could technically be easily pried up, and I don't want them falling off. So I go back and glue them. There, I put his nose on with a palette knife. And I think the tongue is next. He's starting to look handsome, isn't he? I don't know what I'm doing there. A little bit more shaping on the nose. So... I'm still using the acrylic, the Gaffrey thick acrylic paints. You get them online, Gaffrey Art Material. Got a little paint palette there, which is just scrap wood from the house that we're building. I put some of the Gaffrey white down and I'm adding some of the red. You can use other acrylics with the Gaffrey Art Material. Um, other acrylic colors to change the color. There, I've mixed up the pink for his tongue and I'm gonna to have to apply that with a palette knife. Of course, the uh, challenge in doing palette knife is trying to get your texture to be correct, right for what you want and not overworking it. And here I'm wanting a big, smooth, fat looking tongue which is gonna be, it's difficult to get something smooth with working with palette knives. That is also kind of a smaller surface. Like it's not like I can take a large flat palette knife and work over it. My favorite palette knife is just my rounded edge one. And that's a skin, my second favorite one there. A little skinny one that I use a lot. So I think I was doing the under layer no, that's the whole tongue. And then I'll have to go and, like once I have it in place, then I went with the big, the bigger palette knife and smoothed it. Now I've taken to doing most of my shading after the paint dries now and just glazing over it with shading. I used to try to do different colors in the initial um, application process with my paints but I find that now I like shading later I like the look of it glazed on top there I'm doing a little bit of the gum that is showing with the same pink and I'll make those different with my shading later I wanted a fox that looked like he was laughing and then wanted to go steampunk with him Foxes are handsome creatures. <laughs> Add a little bit of the black. Okay, now I'm adding part. his teeth with the skinny um, palette knife. I made the, the ear paint. separately. Uh, you can use the probably concept. should have waited until it was not dry stick to try to the bottom teeth. Slick surfaces. You can use that for your black, to your advantage. I didn't want to do that, um, so. So I, I made the ear it. out of acrylics on. I recently did a dog portrait and, let and it dry. I started with and peeled it up. His teeth to apply lines, and then when it dried, I was able to bring them out. They ended up coming a good, 
I would say half inch up off the um, off of the canvas. So that was pretty cool. I don't know what I'm doing over there. We can't see it. Looks like I'm cleaning my fingers. Your fingers get very dirty when you're doing this. Oh, no, no, no. I'm cutting guitar wires. That's what I'm doing. I have the curly ends of old guitar strings and I'm using them for um, for the fox's whiskers. I wish you could see it better in the video, but if you get to see this piece in person, you can see it then. My dad owns a music school and store, and my daughter works there, so she brings home the guitar strings. When she restrings a guitar, she brings home the old ones to me, and I use them in my art, which is a fun way to do the whiskers. And when it dries, I think even that night, I went ahead and added Gorilla Glue to where the whiskers were touching the clock. They're stuck into the paint on one end, and some of them go down and touch the clock, too. So I'm very, very big on getting everything well glued and well stuck in there. I do keep glue with me in my bus for my shows so that if any little pieces get knocked off, I can re-glue them during the night before a show. I'm rough on my art with all the packing and unpacking that I have to do. I like everything to what, yep, yep, there I'm gluing it. But I like everything to be well stuck. It's a pretty fun piece. I ended up calling it Frolicking Fox. I don't think I captured the rest of the process, but after the ear dried, um, that I made ahead of time on a slick surface. I pulled it up and added some more red paint there over on the right. 